G'day guys, just a quick clip this one. I've had a few people contact me about this fridge, the Travelmate Dual Zone 50 from Evercool. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually include part of the original clip I put in. I'm just gonna focus on the control panel and the app because although I know a lot of people may already be sold on this fridge or um, and the specs and the size and all that kind of thing and they're just curious about the app and the control panel, how that, how that all works. Enjoy guys, remember to like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. Plenty of content coming your way out here at the glorious Leslie Dam at the moment, doing some filming for you guys. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon. Enjoy this shortened clip of the Travelmate Dual Zone, just the app and the control panel. Cheers guys. Alrighty folks, let's have a look at the display panel. So on the left hand side, you've got your on button, your set button, your display, your temperature settings, an adjustment settings, the override switch, and a USB port. So let's turn it on. Turn it on, hold down the on button for three or four seconds. The ambient temperature of the fridge is displayed at this point, as is the Wi-Fi icon, the little snow icon, uh, to let you know that the compressor is kicking in, but getting that temperature down. The current power level of your battery source in a voltage reading. The ambient temperature of both sides of the fridge, whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, you can change that. The little icon here that looks like an R represents the shelf side of the fridge, and when it switches over to prioritize cooling on the other side of the fridge, it goes to a rectangle shape to represent the same shape of the other side of the dual zone fridge. A little VL you may be wondering about, that is a voltage level cutoff for the fridge. Um, I'll get into that in more detail when I get to that setting. To change settings, it's super, super easy, guys. Tap the set button, and one side of the fridge starts flashing, and you can adjust where you want to go with that with your up and down to change the settings. So, for example, one degree, you can either leave it, and it will time itself out and go back to the main screen, and it will stay at that one degree setting, or you can change it, manually hit the two for example and then hit set again and it will actually still go keep that setting and go back to the uh, ambient temperature that's displayed and it will slowly drop obviously to that temperature i've just turned this back on and as you can see we're sitting at 29 degrees on both sides because the fridge has been turned off for a little while and it's heated back up and, and now i've turned it back on to change the temperature on the other side of the fridge you tap set and then set again the other side starts flashing, and for example, we can go to three degrees. You don't have to hit set if you don't want to, you can just leave it, and that will automatically default, save that setting, and now that side of the fridge will drop to three degrees. To change the Celsius to Fahrenheit, if that's your jam, tap the setting button, set button three times, use the up or down, doesn't matter which one, and you can just leave it, it will time out and stay at Fahrenheit. So 29 degrees obviously is 84 degrees Fahrenheit, there you go, you learn something new every day. Obviously, I'm in Australia, we work in Celsius, so I'm going to change that back to Celsius. Again, tap the set button three times until the F starts flashing. Use the up button. Again, you don't have to touch another button on the display, you can just leave it. And it defaults back to Celsius. Again, as I mentioned, the little R symbol represents the side with the shelf, and that will swap over to the uh, rectangle shape, which represents the other side of the fridge. Basically, that's letting you know uh, the prioritization of the cooling. I've already mentioned the voltage down here. You got the Wi-Fi and the little snow icon. Now, VL. With this fridge, it has essentially a safety cutoff, and you can set that level via the voltage coming in to the fridge. So, if your dual battery system starts to run low, you can decide at what level you want to protect your battery at, and have the fridge cut off. Uh, that way, it doesn't fully drain your battery. So. For example, VL is 11 volts, so when your battery gets down to 11 volts, it will automatically cut off the fridge. VM is 12 volts, so when your battery gets down to 12 volts, it will turn itself off. And VH for V high, or voltage high, I suppose you want to call it, is 12.5 volts. And so when your battery drops to 12.5 volts, the fridge will cut out. Now, Evercool recommend that you leave it at VL. I'm going to leave it at VL. Otherwise, if you have a sudden spike of power from other devices that you may have plugged into your dual battery system and it quickly drops down to, for example, to 12.5 volts in your dual battery system, your fridge is going to cut out. So if you have it at VL, the fridge won't turn itself off until your battery is, you know, very, very low. 10.5 uh, volts is flat 
on a AGM battery. So the VL is set internally, and you can't change this, at 11 volts. So you're not going to run your battery completely flat. You should never run your battery sort of below 12.2 to 12.5 if you can avoid it. Um, but if for whatever reason you can't get charged into it on a longer trip or something like that, uh, you do have the benefit of it not cutting out until you get down to 11 volts. To change that setting, hit set once, set twice, set three times, set four times, and you can change it using the plus and minus settings. VM, VH. Obviously, I'm going to leave it at VL. Again, you don't have to hit set to confirm it. You can just let it time out. The panel does have a USB socket just in there, standard USB-A, and it is 0.5 of an amp. So it's not going to quickly charge your mobile phone or your iPad or whatever it might be you want to charge up, but it will do a trickle charge. So don't expect it to charge your phone in half an hour. It's not going to happen. But if you leave it for a little while, it will eventually charge your phone or device. What I recommend and what I tend to do with these sort of uh, options on these devices is I'll plug in a camping light that's rechargeable. So while I'm driving to camp, it's sitting on the USB uh, in the back, just sitting on top of the fridge or wherever, plugged in, and that way it's charging my camping light. Uh, or whatever device I might need later on in the evening at camp. The Travelmate and Evercore range does have this emergency override switch as well. Always leave it in normal use settings unless it's a case of uh, you need the fridge to keep running even though it says it's below 11 volts for example. You flick that to emergency override and what that will do is make the compressor run in the fridge 24-7. It will not shut down. Only use this in extreme circumstances. Do everything else you can before that to avoid having to do this. Perhaps even try and contact your local representative or a fridge technician before you start playing with this setting here. You should always try and keep it on the normal use setting. It really is an emergency only, and if you leave it in emergency override with the compressor running the entire time, you will eventually burn out the compressor and essentially destroy your fridge. If you do put it into emergency override, Make sure you get it to uh, an Evercool repair specialist as quickly as you can. Again, if you leave it on the emergency override with it running the entire time, it will destroy your fridge. So there you go, guys. That's the panel on the Travelmate TMDZ50. Super easy to use, very intuitive. Everything is on the display that you need to know and easily accessible and changeable. Alrighty, guys, onto the app. Now, I'm on an Android device, so I'm going to the Google Play Store. Going up to the search bar and typing in Evercool app. A few different apps will appear. We want the very top one that says Evercool. Install the app through the normal processes. Allow it to access everything as usual. The app will install. Before you open the app, ensure the fridge is on and then find the network for the fridge in your network settings and connect to that Wi-Fi network. The details for this can be found in the user manual of your fridge. Go back into the phone, back to the app, open the app and type in your fridge ID. The fridge ID is actually the last six numbers and letters of your Wi-Fi network. Click add and then your device will appear. The next page of the app will open the login page using your user ID and password which can be found on the front page of your user manual for the fridge type them in and hit the tick. This will open up to a status page showing the current temperatures, voltage and any issues the fridge may or may not be having. On the right hand side you have the settings panel go into the settings page and you can change the settings in your fridge Celsius to Fahrenheit, the temperatures there representing left and right, as well as any battery protection levels you may want to change. Also in the settings panel, you have a graph option. This option is great at seeing how your fridge has been performing over the last 24 hours or so. It will show you temperature variations as well as any voltage variations that may have changed while using the fridge. If you leave the fridge open for a while, you'll obviously see clear changes in the graph, a great way for diagnosing any issues that you may be having. Also, in the settings page, you can turn on and off the freezer from the little drop-down panel on the right. Hit the exit to leave the app, and that's it. A great little app for your fridge. And just a quick look inside the fridge at the light. A nice, bright blue light. It does shine over to the other side of the fridge, the other compartment there, but the camera doesn't quite pick it up that well.
A great light indeed.